We now turn the attention to the Saturday matchup for Georgia Southern. It's the Trojans of Troy. The first time you're going to see the Trojans. We're going to try I, this one again. Yeah, right. I say you. We are going to see them because I'm so happy again. We get to see everybody this week. Well, I they, get to see everybody. Well, we did get to play the first time. It wasn't because of COVID because you weren't going to be able to be there. Right. And so we couldn't go to Trojan Arena. We couldn't go to Hooks. We couldn't go to Sisters. We couldn't do any of that. Yeah, so we welcome yeah, in Silver, the boy. Sylvia at Mossy Grove was off that weekend, so Danny and Colin said we're not doing it again. <laughs> <laughs> we welcome in the voice of the Troy Trojans and Barry McKnight, and we were going to start with how uh, how you're having to recover not seeing Mossy Groves in a while, but I think Barry's kind of picked you up on that. Yeah, no question about that. That is a that is an often occurrence for me. Mossy Grove is the must too for these guys. At uh, Sylvia, the server, she thinks Danny does a great impersonation of me, so uh, she always asks to have their table whenever the Georgia Southern radio crew rolls into town. She remembered that from, I think it was four years before. Yeah. That really mm-hmm. surprised me. Yeah, that was well, the Well, it was spectacular in how bad it was, is what she told me. I don't know if, you know. The best part is you were doing it. She's like, oh, are you doing Mr. Barry? <laughs> and then about 30 minutes later, Barry actually walks in. Yes, it wasn't did. even planned, and it was pretty fantastic. That's right. Yeah, that was good. That was good. It's not an upset that I walk into Mossy Grove. Believe me, that happens on a regular basis. <laughs> Barry, take us into this Troy team. We talked about it a little bit earlier. The game for Georgia Southern and Troy when it was supposed to be at Trojan Arena a couple of weeks ago because of COVID concerns. That one got postponed. When you look at what this Troy team under Scott Cross is this year, what's the biggest thing that stands out? Well, the buy-in as much as anything else. You guys have seen, even though you didn't see them in Troy this year, you'll see them Saturday, you've seen the Scott Cross team before in this league, and you know when he's got it going on what that team looks like. And finally here at Troy, it looks like what he wants it to look like. It's the buy-in. Troy has 15 guys on scholarship. Uh, 14 of them play extended minutes. Uh, The Trojans come at you in waves. Uh, Just about everybody plays. Everybody gives seven, eight, nine minutes of absolute effort, particularly on the defensive end, and then somebody else comes in. It's interesting because we just got done with a win at home against South Alabama, and South Alabama is extremely talented. The top six players in the league in minutes per game, three of them are from South Alabama. To illustrate, Troy doesn't have a single player in the top 30 in the Sun Belt Conference in minutes per game. I think Duke Dean or FEO DG average about 24 minutes a game, maybe. And that's the high water mark for Troy. Everybody shares the minutes. Everybody shares the basketball. Everybody shares the responsibilities. It's not an extraordinarily talented physical athletic physically athletic team but uh it's coached really really well and they will flat get after you on the defensive end yeah the way that the minutes are balanced is something that i've noticed about what coach berg has done this year playing mostly Mm -hmm. nine to ten guys but it's between about 24 to 27 minutes per game for everybody there's not too much of a deviation from those numbers But one thing that seems to stand out for Troy, it's the depth in the front court. And we just saw Louisiana last weekend with Akuba and Brown, two 6'11 guys that sometimes play together and can make things impossible in the paint. But watching multiple games with you guys, the depth in the front court is something that nobody else in this league has. Well, the depth in the front court is something that we have not had in a long time. If you're asking me the biggest specific individual tangible difference besides just the culture and the – you know, and the the depth of this team, it has been the depth on the front court. And it's interesting because Troy has a guy named Nate Shimonga, who's a 6'10 freshman who's uh, been battling a wrist injury all year long. He's a three, maybe a, a, a two, a shooting guard or a small forward at 6'10. He's very skilled, but uh, and he started the first 11 games, but he's not been able to um, – you know, not been able to be as productive as he wants because of the wrist injury. You'll notice he has to shoot free throws left-handed. But, um, you know, when the Trojans started this season, the front line went 6-9 with Odigi, 6-9 with Zay Williams, and 6-10 with uh, Shimonga on the outside. It was the biggest lineup in the Sun Belt Conference and the biggest lineup that Troy has ever had. Since then, you know, with Shimonga's injury issues, and he's not played a ton of minutes lately, it's still the biggest individual factor for this team. Now, 
you don't have Nate Stampley having a uh, Nick Stampley having to play 27 minutes as a six foot four, six foot five inch post player. And, and, you know, he's been playing and he's been effective, but he hasn't been asked to do that nearly as much as he has in the past. That has been a huge difference for the Trojans is just physically down low. They match up so much better than they have in the recent past. Talk a little bit more about that culture. We've become fans of Scott Cross from his time at UT Arlington, now transferring over to Troy. What does that culture really look like, what he has really brought to this Trojan team? Well, it, it, it's what they call take the stairs. You know, that's his uh, big hashtag. And that's not the uh, that's not the Dustin Kearns take the stairs. Scott Cross <laughs> actually had it first here at Troy, uh, where you don't take shortcuts. Literally, when we are in the hotel uh, when we check into a hotel, I mean, I've got a suitcase, I've got a backpack, I've got a big crate of equipment. Nobody takes the elevators, including me. You know, I'm on the fifth floor, the sixth floor. You've got to take a deep breath and go up because there's no shortcuts. The culture looks like you want to be the, he always believes the toughest team will win. Uh, if Troy is not the first one on the floor after a loose basketball, that shows up in film study the next day. Uh, and, and they take pride in that, particularly the defensive side of things. The culture is such that everybody shares responsibilities on the defensive end. And I keep bringing up the defensive end because that is so critical to what he does. If you don't play defense, if you don't commit to defense, you don't play. Uh, it, it's a much tougher, uh, less entitled atmosphere than than his, you know, been around certainly here before. And it took a little while to get there. This year's team probably exemplifies that about as well as it can be exemplified, at least at this point of the season. You have a stockpile of forwards, but you also have a stockpile of Dukes. <laughs> we have... We have two Dukes. We have two Williamses. Um, it, it's definitely difficult. We have an ODG, we have a Rifen, and we have a Shamanga. Uh, this is not a broadcaster's dream, to be sure, <laughs> without a question. Yeah, the, um, the two guards that you referred to, one of them is Duke Dean. He's a second-year freshman, played last year at Panola, and he's the best shooter we've got, but he's five feet nine. Uh, when he's able to free himself up on the outside, Obviously, it frees up things on the inside that much more. He didn't play against South Alabama with a bit of an ankle injury. Uh, the other one is Duke Miles. And Miles, of course, last year was really good as a freshman. Uh, he's out of Montgomery. Miles is a different player. He can shoot it pretty well, but mostly he is, he's is—he's got a great basketball IQ. He's a facilitator. He scored 22 the other night to really key the win against South Alabama back at Trojan Arena. But uh, he sets up other people. He's really, really good at penetrating and kicking the ball out. Plus, he's also um, you know, quite good defensively. Duke uh, Dean shoots the ball really well. Tough kid at five foot nine plays with a chip over his shoulder. Defensively, he takes a lot of chances just because he knows he can't go chest up against a lot of people one on one on the outside. He's not big enough for that, but he's a he's a risk taker defensively. He gets a lot of steals, gets his hand on a lot of basketballs. They're the same name, but different style of guard. You touched on it a little bit earlier. It's not necessarily the most physically gifted team that Troy has had. But the toughness, how do you balance with this team being a tough team without having to be the bang for 40 minutes in a game? Well, the 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 way that Troy gets it done uh, is is not beautiful. It's not beautiful basketball. Um, for instance, against South Alabama, we played them twice this week and split. Uh, they are so much more fluid than the Trojans are. They're, they're very athletic, very physically talented. So the approach from Troy is to muddy the game up, you know, to, uh, to, to, to be physical. There were a lot of fouls called to be, uh, um, you know, first on the floor for a loose basketball, to, to play chest up against Yvonne Franklin and some of those talented guys inside. Uh, Troy does not want a free-flowing back-and-forth game against anybody even though troy does have great depth what they want is to be able again to get your chest into somebody to rebound the basketball uh to contest every shot you know the closed outs have always got to be strong against a against a perimeter shooter um it's a um 
it's a it's a way that the Trojans have to to really make a game ugly, but it's still very disciplined in what they do. There are some ways where it seems like that is somewhat of a departure from those Scott Cross teams at UT Arlington. We always associated an up-tempo style with them, a lot of threes, a lot of pressing. Something I did notice, though, maybe trying to marry the two, it seemed like you did use a little bit more backcourt pressure in that Saturday game, and I'm guessing that when you've got 4,000 Trojan fans instead of 4,000 Jaguar fans, it makes it a little bit easier to get into something like that. Well, we felt like we had to do it because, you know, again, they're so very athletic. You want to take as much, make them take as much time as you can before they get into their half court offense because when they run their plays, um, you know, they've got guys who can just jump over people out there. But yeah, the fan experience on Saturday was huge for that win. That was one of the reasons why you hated like the Dickens not to be able to have Georgia Southern back at Trojan Arena and Georgia State back at Trojan Arena when, when it showed up on the schedule. Cause at that point, we were first in the league and the crowds were really good and they really had gotten off to a good start in some belt play. We had so many promotions around that one. So this is one that has been circled for the Trojans. Really thought we had a good opportunity against the Eagles back at Trojan Arena. That's not going to happen. So therefore, these two coming up, the Georgia swing for Troy, is going to be critically important. Those games are definitely scheduled, or definitely circled. What's the biggest thing in this matchup? It seems like the last couple of years, it's been some really interesting games between Georgia Southern and Troy. <laughs> What's the biggest part of this series from the Troy side? Well, Jake Allsmiller has graduated. To me, that's the biggest part. <laughs> so has Wesley Person. <laughs> so, yeah, well, the, um, the, the, the issue, as always, with Georgia Southern at Georgia Southern is dealing with the unique environment as much as anything. You've got, you've got the, it feels like every Eagle fan is on each shoulder. You know, the noise is big. The, the compactness of the experience it's difficult to get used to, and it's unique in this league, and it's a good kind of unique as well. Also, you know, just the talent of the team. You know, we have seen go through there Ike Smith and, and Tookie Brown and, you know, some of the really, really talented players that have come through that program, the really, really emotional players, uh, you know, uh, uh, that feed off of that crowd. Therefore, one of the keys, I think, for Troy – uh, in this game is going to be to try their best to take that crowd out of it. Got to get off to a good start, something the Trojans seemingly have never done at Hanner. But to me, that's still very important. Plus, you know, everything that Troy tries to do on offense ultimately comes through FEODG. He is a 6'9 player, a transfer from UTEP, uh, the most physical post player that we've had since Jordan Bernardo, but he's a different kind of player than yeah. Jordan. Uh, he gets doubled a lot on the post. He either has to take it in very decisively. What he's really been working on is getting it out of there once the double team comes down. He is, I think, third on the team in assists right now. So a lot of the offense flows through Odigi. He got an early foul trouble against South Alabama down in Mobile and was not effective. And that, and for all intents and purposes, kind of cooked to Troy's goose in that game. We'll have to try to keep people off of Barry's shoulders this weekend. Uh, those those are it, lucky people. It does feel that way, <laughs> and, and you know I cannot um, I cannot stress that enough. You go to places in this league like in Lafayette, where the arena's too big, or you go places where um, you know where the crowd is really not in effect. I guarantee you, everybody in this league, every coach in this league, has to take into account, you know, just the fact that it feels like you are you are in a cauldron. At Hanner, it's hard. It's hard to hear. It's hard to communicate. It's hard once Georgia Southern gets rolling to try to get that stopped because the crowd's rocking. You remember last year when uh, when Stampley he had a tooth knocked out yeah. in the game down in uh, down at Georgia Southern. He wanted to come back in the ball game. Uh, couldn't let him do it because you know he didn't have a tooth and, and all that. He ended up having to have surgery on it. He wanted to come back in there because he wanted to shut up the Georgia Southern fans. You know, it's a big deal, and you know we can be um, we can be cavalier about it and, and all that. But but playing Georgia Southern in Tanner is is an experience that no other venue in this league offers, and you better be ready for it. Barry, appreciate the time. Looking forward to being able to actually get to catch up with some of our friends this weekend. I'll get JT on Thursday, Barry on Saturday. There's not a whole lot more you can ask for in life, right? <laughs>
<laughs> I'm looking forward to it as well, gentlemen, as always. Thanks, Barry. I appreciate the time. Oh, Barry McKnight. I think I say this every week, but he's a treasure. Let him just narrate random things. I think he should be the permanent book on tape voice. I don't know that there's a monopoly on that industry, but <laughs> there should be. Uh, I appreciate the nod, him talking about Sylvia at Mossy Grove, which when we go to Troy, we get a chance to go out and eat. That's a, that's a guarantee. Yeah. Uh, we we indoctrinated Aaron and Eric whenever we went for baseball. That's right. He was down there last year. So it was the four of us. and Sadly, Barry didn't walk in as you were doing your... I feel like we needed to be tucked away for him to walk in. We were tucked away that 917. But... You know, Barry and Jerry are two of the local legends in Troy, and rightfully so. Yeah. But you're not far behind in Troy there, sir. Because I promise you, whenever you walked into Mossy Grove, Sylvia knew exactly who you were. No, she didn't realize it until we took. she, te- she took her orders. She saw the Georgia Southern stuff, and then she looked at me and said... Oh, you're the one that does the Barry, Mr. Barry voice, aren't you? Yep. And then, uh, yeah, that, that, that's <laughs> Eric was looking around like, what did we just walk into? It's really good. Yeah. It's really good. Yeah. yeah. Er- Eric likes to say yeah. really good. <laughs> yeah. And then you and, was it you and Eric stayed around to listen to the ghost stories while Aaron and I pointed the card toward the road? Yeah, because she tried to show us in one of the pictures. Yeah, and I said, no, thank you. I'm good. She said that. She kept pointing to a specific spot in the picture where if you looked hard enough, you could see the outline of a ghost. Yeah, and it was about right where we were standing. Well, yeah. y'all were standing. Well, they do that intentionally. Well, part you have fun with that. It was fun. It was good. Yeah. You and Eric have fun with that. I was in the car. Yeah, pointed the nose yeah, toward the road. This one this one has a thing about ghosts nope. and the supernatural. And nope, the, do not do it. The nope. paranormal and all Mm-mm. that. No, sir. Don't hold it against us. Nope. I don't care if you hold it against me or not. <laughs> Could not care less. <laughs>